Hi, and welcome back to the Food Fund, where we analyze investing in food stocks. If you love food and love buying food stocks, beverage stocks, and restaurant stocks, you will love this channel. In this video we will be analyzing if Coca-Cola stock is a buy. Coca-Cola, stock ticker symbol KO, is just one of many companies we explore on this channel. If you are new here, our goal is to help you put your money where your mouth is and invest in the best food companies. We have a lot to cover so let's go ahead and jump right in. Cue the logo. Let's start with some background info on Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola was founded in 1892 in Atlanta, Georgia. Back then, it was just a syrup recipe dreamed up by pharmacist John Pemberton, combined with carbonation. Pemberton's special syrup became extremely popular. Fast forward over a century later and Coca-Cola is a global giant with over 5,500 beverages, including Fanta, Sprite, Minute Maid, Powerade, Dasani Water, and Costa Coffee. More recently the company has added innocent smoothies and body armor sports drinks to their portfolio of brands. Today the company has over 80,000 employees and is the large position in the portfolio of investing great Warren Buffett. Now let's look at the price action. Starting with the one year chart we see that Coca-Cola had a cager of about 0%. Zooming out to the five year chart we see that Coca-Cola had a cager of 4%. No astronomical gains here, just slow steady share price growth. If we perform a backtest comparison of investing $10,000 in Coca-Cola versus the S&P 500 we find some interesting results for Coca-Cola. In that comparison with the S&P 500. $10,000 invested in Coca-Cola would have grown to $14,683 or a 8% cager versus $20,979 or a 16% cager if invested in the S&P 500. This demonstrates underperformance for Coca-Cola. Interestingly, a Coca-Cola investment would have been slightly less volatile with a 18.18% standard deviation versus 18.34% for the S&P 500. Coca-Cola underperformed the S&P 500 in terms of the best year performance for which Coca-Cola grew 21% versus S&P 531% but outperformed on worst year performance where Coca-Cola fell only 4% versus the S&P 518% fall. In terms of max drawdown Coca-Cola fell 24%, the same max drawdown as the 24% drawdown for the S&P 500. Nevertheless, Coca-Cola did underperform the S&P 500 in comparisons using the Sharp Ratio and the Sortino Ratio. Now let's hop over to market share and take a look at Coca-Cola's market share. In this newest version of market share we have the dashboard, where we can quickly gather a lot of information at a glance. Expanding the dashboard we can look under beverages and see that Coca-Cola is categorized under non-alcoholic beverages. Expanding the non-alcoholic beverage tab we can see that Coca-Cola has the second largest market share but does not appear to be growing. In fact it looks like Coca-Cola is shrinking nearly 3% per year. Let's look closer at the year by year changes in market share. So we come over here and type in the ticker symbol for Coca-Cola and see that the market share is 4.45% out of the publicly traded food, beverage, and restaurant stocks currently in the market. This means that about $4.45 out of every $100 spent to eat goes to Coca-Cola. The company has significant market share. The 5-year market share cager for Coca-Cola is minus 2.7%. This means that Coca-Cola's market share has been shrinking over time. If we start in 2019 we see that the market share was 4.93%. 4.3% .3 in 2020. 4.28% in 2021, 4.34% in 2022, and rose to 4.45% over the trailing 12 months. While subtle, we can see that Coca-Cola market share bottomed in 2021 and has been slowly rising since then. Don't call it a comeback. Let's take a look at the fundamentals. Gross margin is 59%. This is better than most of their competitors and really shows how strong the brand value is. Revenue has compounded at around 5% over the past 5 years and has reached over $45 billion most recently. Whoa, that is a lot of soda. 
Looking at cash flow we see a 3% cager over the last 5 years for operating cash flow, while capex has worsened at a 5% cager. As a result free cash flow has grown at a 5% cager. Despite being a very large and well known company, Coca Cola continues to grow, slowly and steadily. You have to appreciate that this large cash cow has continued to do well for so long. Weighted average shares outstanding have actually grown over the last 5 years. Going from 4.31 billion shares in 2019 to 4.34 billion shares most recently, Coca-Cola has been diluting shareholders ever so slightly. To be honest I am surprised to see dilution here. The good news is that the rate of dilution is almost unperceivable with the share count rising less than 0.2% per year. Now let's view return on invested capital. Return on invested capital has risen from 11% in 2019 to 14% in 2023. Again, a return on invested capital of 14% is not outstanding but the slow steady growth is a very good sign. Another favorite metric is cash conversion cycle, a measure of operational efficiency regarding supplier and payer leverage as well as inventory control. Going from 38 days in 2019 to minus 196 days most recently, Coca-Cola has gotten much more efficient over time. Digging into the details a bit more it looks like the company was able to negotiate extremely favorable terms with their suppliers. This again points to the size of the company and their tremendous brand value. Now, let's look at Coca-Cola's debt. The net debt to EBITDA has fallen over the past 5 years going from 2.8 in 2019 to 1.9 most recently. Nothing bad to say here. While no debt is obviously better, Coca-Cola has been steadily paying down debt to very manageable levels. Last, let's explore dividends. Current dividend yield is a healthy 3.1% with a dividend payout percentage of 73%. Coca-Cola's dividend payout percentage is a little higher than I would like to see. However, I do think that the dividend practice should be sustainable. Dividends per share for this company have grown at an 3.4% dividend per share cager over the past 5 years and a 5.2% dividend per share cager over the past 10 years. Coca-Cola's dividend history is clearly healthy though the dividend growth has slowed over time. The fundamentals of Coca-Cola are pretty good. In any event, should it be added to the portfolio? Before sharing my final thoughts on that, please click the like button and let YouTube know that you like the content. Subscribe and click the notification bell to make sure you catch the latest videos. Your continued support means so much to the food fund. We are now on track to hit 1000 subscribers this year so please, please, please subscribe, share, and like our videos. Now, let's get into my final thoughts. Ok, let's go to the spreadsheet and write out some key values for Coca-Cola. It is a beverage company with a gross margin of 59%. The 5 year revenue per share cager is 5% and the 5 year free cash flow per share cager is 5%. Again, this is nice. Steady revenue and free cash flow growth coupled with an amazingly great gross margin. A return on invested capital of 14% is pretty good and growing. Next, the cash conversion cycle of minus 196 days is so good I can hardly contain my delight. This is supplier leverage at its best. Concerning debt, a net debt to EBITDA of 1.9 means that it would take Coca-Cola just under 2 years of earnings to pay back their debt. So from a fundamental standpoint, Coca-Cola is very solid. Now let's switch our attention over to valuation. Coca-Cola is slightly undervalued relative to the S&P 500 with a ratio of 0.9. The price to earnings growth, or PEG ratio, is 3.8 indicating that Coca-Cola is overvalued relative to their projected earnings growth. We can't take a couple of things away from the valuation data. First, the future earnings growth of Coca-Cola does not look stellar. However, solid blue chip companies often command a premium for their stability which is probably why the peg ratio is high. Second, with the marketing love with tech companies at the moment, now may be a great time to pick up a blue chip dividend aristocrat like Coca-Cola at a slight discount to the market. Coca-Cola has had steady grower over the past 5 years as noted by its revenue and free cash flow growth. Even though the 5 year market share has declined, the trend seems to show a rebound in progress. There is really nothing bad to say about Coca-Cola. Dividend investors will love the aristocrat status and value investors may see a deal at these prices. 
While I would prefer a bit more growth, the stability of the company, share price growth, and free cash flow growth definitely draw my attention. For me, Coca-Cola for sure is going on the watch list. Many thanks for watching. What do you think about Coca-Cola and their stability? Please share your thoughts below. It is always great to hear from you. Please check out some more videos right now and don't forget to put your money where your mouth is.